Uh, those of you that requested credentials for Wisconsin, they did not get those in the mail uh, for me to distribute in time, so you'll have to pick those up at Will Call up in Madison on Saturday. Our friends from the Iowa Farm Bureau will be here next week, um, along with ANF Wall of Honor honoree Brian Balaga. We'll have Brian speak uh, to you all after Coach Ference, roughly 215-ish, 220 next week. And the assistant coach next, uh, or I'm sorry, tomorrow will be Coach Barnett, offensive line. Okay, Coach. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Good afternoon. Appreciate everybody being here. Um, just talk a little bit about last week, and then certainly uh, look forward to this week's game. Um, you know, as I said the other day, just really happy to get the win. I think with each each week, our team's learning. And, um, you know, the other day, certainly had good focus, thought they played hard and basically fought the entire game. And um, two weeks ago, you know, it was kind of uh, a deal where we had a really rally in the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, we're in big time play now, so it's going to be tough each and every quarter. And we just uh, hopefully we're learning as we go along here. So, you know, I think Saturday defensively uh, played a really good game outside of two. Possessions kind of, I don't know, letdown is not the right word, but uh, for whatever reason, just weren't quite there. So need to do our best to eliminate that. Good to see some pass rush uh, success there uh, during the course of the game. Offensively, you know, the run game was probably the highlight. So I think the line took some steps and certainly the tight ends, fullbacks involved in that as well. And special teams just want to congratulate Tori uh, being Big Ten Player of the Week, special teams player of the week. And uh, he's done a great job all season long. He's really Practicing well, the punt game looked good, and uh, you know, got some things in the field goal area to clean up. Certainly, so uh, move forward there. And then, just the other note, just uh, recent developments. So Noah has been cleared to practice. Noah Shannon's cleared to practice. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll learn or what when we'll learn uh, what his status moving forward is going to be, but at least we got him on the field now. He's back on the roster and uh, able to be part of the team as a football player instead of uh, a guy just kind of helping out a little bit. So. That's positive, and we'll keep our fingers crossed as we move forward. Uh, moving forward to this week, certainly, you know, a big challenge with Wisconsin. Our captains, the same guys, got Joe uh, Evans and uh, Jay Higgins on defense, Luke Lachey and uh, Kate McNamara. So I remain the guys on offense. And injury wise, don't expect Jazz to be back. Don't expect um, TJ Hall, or excuse me, not TJ, but uh, Deshaun uh, being out. You know, I don't, I don't see him coming back right now. So. See how that goes uh, as we move forward here. Third road game uh, this season and uh, third straight road game on, in a tough environment. Uh, certainly the last two, then two have been tough environments. Uh, Camp Randall's the same way and certainly and then a big part of the challenge is the fact that you're playing a really good football team and that's, uh, that's what we're looking at with Wisconsin. So um, certainly they're a different team in some ways, you know, obviously a new coaching staff. Uh, a few new members that they've added on to the team, but then they've also got a lot of players that we've seen prior to. So, you know, it's a, it's a good blend. Uh, coach Fickle's done a great job, uh, certainly most recently at Cincinnati. He's a tremendous football coach. He had a great career as a player, and uh, he's done a great job at Cincinnati. He's doing an outstanding job up there. He and his staff have just hit the ground running. Uh, they look uh, very impressive in all three phases up there. And like you'd expect, uh, they're physical, they're strong. Uh, again, a lot of the great players that they've had in the past are still on that team. And uh, sitting here thinking about their line, they're running back, you know, outstanding players, some really good guys on defense, very active, tough guys to block and, and deal with. And then if you think about their special teams, uh, they had a really good group of core guys, still do. And they've got two new specialists, I think, that have really uh, made them that much uh, better. So, you know, typical of Wisconsin, they're a big physical team, play hard, play very aggressively, and uh, look very, very good on film, and, you know, credit to them there. So um, that's kind of that. And just, you know, a little sidebar, I know uh, we had a couple of tight ends do really well uh, on Sunday. I don't get to watch any NFL football, but did hear about, uh, about the success, I guess, George and uh, Sam both had, I think it's just kind of an illustration in college football that, uh, you know, players get better if they're doing things right and have good work habits. And certainly those two guys, uh, neither one were big recruits when they got here, but had great careers and uh, continuing just to play at a high level. And, and I think probably uh, safe to say they're both improving uh, each and every every day. So that's uh, the fun part about uh, football just in general. Uh, so, you know, kudos to those guys and all the guys doing well. And then the last thing, our kid captain is... Uh, 
uh, Maddie Ramirez, who's a young lady from uh, LeClaire. And as I understand it, at age two, she was diagnosed with a pretty rare disorder. And, uh, you know, the prognosis was not great. Uh, happy to say she's a 17-year-old senior now. Uh, and uh, as I understand it, big personality, doing really well. And she gave me a little wrist, wristband here back in Kids Captain Day. So uh, we'll be thinking about her this weekend. And uh, certainly glad to have her as our Kid Captain this week. So that being said, I'll throw it out for questions. With Noah, how much time do you think it would take? Obviously, it's missed a lot of time to get him kind of ramped up the game speed. Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, we've never been in this situation. So he's missed a lot of time. Uh, he's got a great attitude. He's been around and he was working through an injury anyway, so probably couldn't have played physically until a couple of weeks ago. Um, hasn't been in pads in, in quite a while now, so we'll, we'll just see. But um, I, I don't, I don't know even when the decision is going to be made. So at least we have ample time to get him ready, hopefully. Statistically, sometimes the box scores defy logic, and you guys keep winning games. How would you articulate kind of how you're able to keep doing that over the last several years, and kind of what your message is to the team, you know, about finding ways to win? I guess. I mean, really, um, it's probably kind of the history of our program. Um, the, the exceptions when it goes the other way. You know, 2002 comes to mind. Uh, we had very few injuries in 2002 and, and really um, hit stride offensively probably at an early time, and that began the year before. But, you know, this is kind of more common. You know, usually we have challenges to deal with in, in some form. So, you know, but, but ultimately I think that's what the neat, the neat part about the game is. Uh, you know, the goal is to get to the finish line and, and find a way to be successful and win the game. And, you know, is, is I don't want to call it 202 easy because I'm thinking about come to mind right away, uh, Indiana. I mean, we had to pick three off in the red zone to win that game. I don't think Indiana won a game going into that game. It was like week 10 or 9, something like that. So, you know, it's never easy. Um, but then I, I think about two years later, 04, I think we were next to last in rushing the football that year, and we were still Big Ten champs. So, you know, there, there's always challenges, and it's just trying to work around challenges, I guess, is uh, probably the way to do it. And I, I don't know about other places, but I know that's kind of, you know, been our story year in and year out. When you look at uh, Wisconsin, uh, did you have to do a double take off when you look to their offense, uh, as much 11 personnel as they run versus, like, every other year combined yeah. in the last 20 years? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, that's that's certainly a switch. And, um, you know, we got a good look at them a week ago watching Purdue film. So, yeah, it looks different from that standpoint. <coughs> Excuse me. But what doesn't look different is they still look big physical. They run the ball really well. And when you got backs like they have, although one's injured right now, but uh, you know, Allen's just a tremendous football player. And, you know, I think we all noticed that a couple of years ago, but he's even better now. So, Good starting point, and the quarterback's playing really well for him, too. And he can run and throw. So it's a, it's a dangerous attack. And, um, you know, but, it, but it's, again, the key ingredients of having a big, big veteran line. Those guys are very experienced and very proficient. And then skilled guys that can, you know, make some really good plays. And they've got a nice group of receivers, too. Uh, some old and some new. So they've got a good mix there. With the receivers, Braylon Allen seems to be much more of a threat in the receiving game than in past years. What element have you seen from his game versus past years? Yeah, that probably fits in with what Scott's referring to, just their style of play. But he, he's a talented football player. And uh, uh, you know, I mentioned George and Sam. I don't think he was overly recruited. And as I understand it, went there more as a defensive guy. But uh, he certainly found the right place to play him. And, uh, yeah, he's just a tremendous football player. So, yeah, they're going to get it to him a couple different ways. That's good coaching. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, after you watching the film, what do you kind of what's your message to Deacon? Is it maybe trying to fix some of the mistakes, or maybe maybe trying trying too hard to look like something. Yeah, like two that. things. I, yeah, I think that that probably is number one on the list. I think he's probably pressed him a little bit, and uh, I can't read minds, but my guess he's a very prideful guy, and you know he wants to do well just like all of our guys do, and uh, so yeah, I think he's probably pressed him a little bit. Second thing is he hasn't played. I mean, uh, since 2020, and that was three high school games. COVID shortened year, spring, you know, spring season, and uh, I guess he played. I, I did hear a rumor. I asked him about that a little bit. Some kind of wild card team, or you know, like a wildcat, you know, a guy from here, a guy from there, one of those deals. I don't know who they played, but uh, point point being, he hasn't played much the last couple of years, so this is kind of his maiden voyage, and you know, we may have to be a little bit patient. But thought he did a lot of good things. Um, the pick that he had was a tough, tough, you know, tough play for him. Uh, so I thought, thought he made some good decisions, just didn't quite have the accuracy that he's capable of, and hopefully that'll 
you know, work itself out as we move forward. He's talking about being a little jittery with his first game as a starter mm-hmm. last week. Now going to road game, a place that obviously he has a lot of history with. How do you just keep him kind of steady? Uh, nothing special. I mean, other than just, you know, he wants to do better. I think he wants to get off to a better start, certainly. And, uh, you know, hopefully he'll do that. But, you know, no matter where we play, it's going to be the challenge is just uh, for him to play the way he can play. And uh, hopefully after starting uh, this last game, now he's got a little bit, he's hardly a grizzled veteran, but he's at least, you know, he's, he's done it. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. What's your message right now to the, to the receivers? Uh, they didn't catch a pass the other day for the first time in this program since the 70s um, in the game. But uh, they've had opportunities. They've slipped through their fingers, uh, but also haven't been targeted a lot. I mean, what, what are you trying to do with the receivers and what are you trying to say to keep them engaged, I guess? Well, I mean, I hope they are engaged. I think they are. And, uh, you know, that, that stuff's all going to play out the way it plays out. And Saturday, the way the, way the game developed, uh, you know, it just we were playing in a way that we felt gave us our best chance to win in that particular ball game. You never know how it's going to unfold or what it's going to look like. And, uh, you know, we were having pretty good luck with the running game at that point. So that's just kind of the way it worked out. But uh, we're not, we're not going to change our overall philosophy a lot. And everybody's got a role. Everybody's got a chance and opportunity. And hopefully uh, when it comes their way, they'll be able to, you know, execute the way we think they can. And they're, they're good players. So they'll bounce back. Speaking of wide receivers, Caleb Brown, are you able to elaborate on his situation? Is he available for this yeah, week? Yeah, I said the other day it was a personal matter, and he uh, was back at practice yesterday, and you know, he's had two good days. Yep. Would you describe his absence as disciplinary in any way? No, I'd say it was a personal, personal matter, and yeah, personal is personal. Not public, it's personal. <laughs> Opposite of public. <laughs> Kirk, what's the, the magnitude of this game? Yeah, who knows, maybe this could be what determines who wins this division. I know, you know it's just one of 12, but just overall, Iowa, Wisconsin, you know, what's the magnitude of that? Yeah, I think it's a rivalry game. It's, we got a trophy. I do know that. So I, as far as I know, that's still there. Uh, I'm losing track of the rivalry things. I think we're down to one now, moving forward. We were, we were accused of having three, and uh, I think we actually have more than three. So I, I know this. It's a border game. When I got here in 81, it was a big game uh, back then. And uh, it's always been that way. It's been a pretty good uh, series over overall in time, you know, history, at least my, my 34 years involved in it. So uh, that part's good. It's, it's a big game. We both have one loss right now. They've got a really good team. We're trying to become a good team. Um, you know, but to worry about anything besides that, besides, you know, it's a conference game. So conference games are different than non-league games. Uh, they all count in the end. But, um, yeah, conference games are important. So it's about where it's at. And, you know, any any worry about rankings or pennant races and all that stuff, uh, that, in my mind, comes in November right now. We're just trying to trying to move forward here and see if we can find a way to win. When you look at the West Division, uh, this is the 10th and final year of it. Uh, you know, there are a lot of legends and uh, leaders. Are you? Does that count as a 10 or outside of 10? No, that's, that's three before that. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. So I kind of lost <laughs> track. But, yeah. And you do get three rivals going forward. Okay. You're the only school to have. But, but anyway. Uh, Did I read that we only got one? No, you get three. You get three. No, and the, with the new. Did yeah. they put a new schedule out or something? Yeah, you get three. I was the only one with oh, three. I thought it just said one. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but Everybody was mad about that. I was like, we didn't do anything. We just submitted them like anybody could. Yeah. yeah. Penn State has zero, you have three. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> the West Division. Um, what are kind of your thoughts now? I mean, this is the last year for it. You know, it seemed to work out really well for Iowa, where every team but one is on your border. You kind of have shared similar resources and his, shared histories. And what's kind of been your thought of playing in this division for 10 years? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. And just all those things you described probably means it's outdated because, as we know, we've moved past all that, I think, in college football. And that was, that was kind of what was... To me, the message a year ago when we expanded uh, to 16, right? That made it 16. Um, even going back to 13, 14, we kind of broke away from that mold or that model. So, yeah, we're living a little bit in the past, having border border teams and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, we're, we're moving into a new phase with college football. So it's uh, it just kind of is what it is. And we'll make adjustments as we go forward here next year. When you look at the running game, 
obviously that was the catalyst in the past game. How can that help Deacon in you know not having to rely so much on that big offense? Yeah, I mean, just in a perfect world, you want to be balanced. At least that's our goal, is to try to have the, the threat to run and pass. And sometimes uh, your opponent dictates how it's going to go, either you know going into a game or during the game. And uh, pretty much anybody can take something away if they're committed to it, and then hopefully it opens up something else. But in a perfect world, you know, we'd like to be balanced. We've certainly been going through some adjustments and uh, you know trying to get settled and acclimated with our personnel. And... Uh, so hopefully as we move forward here, the second half of the season, we can be a little bit more settled and just kind of get some consistency and um, you know figure out what works best for us. And Saturday just happened to be running game is going a little bit, but uh, each and every week could be a little bit different. Hopefully we'll have flexibility enough to be able to adjust and be successful. From an injury standpoint, what's the latest with the young and the string uh, I, I think they both have a chance, but we'll you know let the week play out and see what it looks like. Yep. Kirk with Deacon, um, I feel like with the guys you can go two ways. One is the guys can kind of joke around with him, mess with him. The other way is they can give you like a real genuine thoughts about going back to his old stomping grounds. Have you seen either of those from uh, from Deacon's teammates? No, you? not really. Um, and I, you know, I'm not with those guys all the time, obviously. But uh, no, he seems he seems like does every week. You know, just um, seems focused on trying to get the game plan down and do what he can do and. Uh, I hope he, you know, to that point, like I haven't given him a lot of great thought. Um, you know, he played there, but it wasn't like he played a lot. You know, in fact, he didn't play at all as far as I know. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know that there's some kind of sentimental or, you know, emotional deal going on. I don't think so. I think, you know, I think he's just he's happy to be here. And not that he's not happy to be there, but he, I think he's happy to be here and he's looking forward. When you look at that touchdown run by, by Caleb Johnson, I think, it was, I think it was split zone type of run. But you look at the way that your line blocked on that, and you had, it seemed to be almost perfect. You got vertical when you needed to. You got to seal out on different areas. It just um, is that what you're talking about when you say you see this line maturing, and is that kind of the fruit of that? So yeah, like, I think so. I think you know Saturday is probably our best day out there, and um, you know saw some really good things. And then in that particular play. The way they played helped us too because of their coverage. You know, they didn't have a safety back there, so we were able to catch them and uh, the line creased it really well. He hit it, and there was nobody back there, so that, you know, instead of having a 20 yard play, all of a sudden now you're, you know, going through the end zone. It would have been 100 if we had a 100 yard field there, so uh, that that's just part of the way they play, though. It's unique, and I, I doubt we'll get that this year, this week. Cooper DeGene seems to keep on making plays. Two weeks ago, the 70 yard punt return last week, I think it's 40 something yards on the interception return. Do you attribute that just to instincts or? No, he's just a good football player. I mean, uh, let me rephrase that a rare player. Um, I mean, it's hard to think of many guys in 25 years that, that can do things like he does, and he does them pretty consistently. You know, it's like I said with Sam and George, you know, I think probably one of the neat things about his story. Uh, somebody pointed out this year we traveled to Iowa State that he wasn't on the traveling team two years ago to Iowa State. So uh, I think he played the last five games. You know, so he rose up later on. It wasn't like he was a uh, uh, killing it. You know, early in the season or in preseason. But as the season went on, it was like, hey, you know, this guy's pretty good. Let's get him in there. And then it just it continues to just to get a snowball, if you will. And he's a really good player. But but he didn't walk in here like yeah, there's Cooper Jean. I mean, we thought he was pretty good, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't think anybody's right in the bottom when he came here. Uh, but that, that's really not important. What, what you do when you get somewhere is what, what counts, and you know, he just keeps getting better. But he's a very talented player, yes. When you look at uh, the NFL, and there's, it, Iowa's got the moniker of tight end U. I mean, you've got more catches by four starters. But they're all completely different, but they are equally effective in their different ways. Well, what is the underlying element that all of them, you know, the starters have had, and even some in, the, in recent years before them, what is their common element that's helped allow them to be successful? Yeah, I think it's really true of a lot of our guys that have gone on and done really well. Um, you know, we've had linemen like Worse and Linderbaum don't look the same size-wise, but they, you know, and to your point, when you're talking about the tight ends, so they're all very different uh, type tight ends, at least in my mind they are, but they all have, you know, just great pride and great competitiveness. They're good athletes. Um, but, you know, they just, they just, uh, they play within their skill set. But I, I think the common denominator with all the great players that we've had through here 
just take tremendous pride in their 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 performance. So as a result of that, um, you know, they work on the on things the right way. Uh, and they just, you know, they really dedicate themselves. They don't just rely on what abilities they have. And yeah, that that's having abilities one thing, but to really put it to use and maximize it. <coughs> that, excuse me. That that's when you're in business and I think that that's fair to say about all the guys you're referencing. You know, that's that's common denominator. TJ, I think, was the 66th ranked tight end. Yeah. George was uh, like the 200th wide receiver, a two star. Noah Fant was had options to go play defensive end, and and Sam was, I think, Bowling Green was maybe his only offer or something like that. And yet here they are, they come in, and then they each took different paths to the field. But uh, do you ever kind of does it surprise you at all to see where they have ended up? Um. Not once you get to work with them. You know, if we were smarter, we would have known that, you know, while we were recruiting them. But, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the guys we've recruited, we've recruited late or, you know, nobody else was recruiting them, Cooper DeGene. But, um, you know, again, the common denominator is what they do when they get there, and all we do is provide the opportunity and then hopefully good resources for them. They're, they're still the guys doing the work, and uh, that's true of each and every one of those guys. And they've all been coachable, too. Like, they, they want to get better, and they're they're eager to get better, whether it's strength conditioning, the football part, uh, paying attention, nutrition, just all those kinds of things that go into making a guy a really good football player. And, um, you know, they're hungry to learn and then hungry to – uh, try to try to exercise what they can to get better. Kirk, over the years, there have been a lot of players that have said their fil- their ability to stay film and you know critique themselves has really helped elevate their game. Uh, when you know if you're Deacon Hill, if you're a younger guy, it can be tough to not tunnel in on the positives or the negatives. How do you teach your players to just stay level-headed when it comes to evaluating tape and how important is that? Well, you have to. I mean, two, kind of two components there. The the, the Understanding the value of tape and really appreciating the value of tape is is really critical. It's, it's important in opponent study. Uh, there's a lot of answers on the tape if you'll put the time in. And then the second part is, and usually older guys are better at that. And then, you know, I've always kind of encouraged players that I've worked with to, to study themselves. Uh, you know, study, study great players and then, you know, what can you take over but study yourself because you got to know what your weaknesses are to, to fix them typically. And, you've, you know, they show up on tape too. So if... If you really wire in on that, uh, at least it gives you a chance to move forward. And that's, that's you know, we're trying to do with every guy and every team is, you know, get them to step forward, you know, find a way to move forward. And there's always challenges, always challenges. So it's, you know, opponent study is important, but I think, you know, really being honest about what you're doing too is maybe uh, equally as important as far as, you know, if you want to move forward. There's been some discussions with just a lot about injury, different stuff. First off, are you feeling okay? Your voice sounds a little bit like you might be okay. Yeah, I mean, it's October, I guess. So uh, I guess, I'm guessing Reese. It's probably got his. I, t- I was told somebody else on the staff. I feel I feel fine. I just sound like crap, so I apologize. But I feel fine. Yep. Uh, same question. Uh, after Caleb had missed a few games, is he feeling back to healthy 100% after Saturday's game? Uh, as far as I know, yeah. yeah. He seems fine. He was great at practice, and, yeah, I think he's doing well. How beneficial was it for you guys to play Utah State now and, and then to, to kind of parlay some of those same experiences down to, to Wisconsin who were – same, but yeah. you know, quick passing game and those elements. Yeah, I, you know, I think you learn from everybody and uh, every experience. Um, so, yeah, yeah, when you play a tempo team, and last week those guys are moving pretty good, so it's not exactly the same, but there's, there's, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Those kinds of experiences don't hurt. And same thing when you play a team with uh, similar defensive philosophies, it's especially if they're a little bit different from what you're, although. It's kind of dumb to say that in college football because it's like every week's almost different. Uh, there are a lot of different, you know, um, menus, if you will. Pro football is a little bit more standardized, but uh, you know, I guess styles of play in college are kind of like starting times in college. You know, who knows? You know, could be three, could be eleven, could be whatever. Two thirty. I'm missing a few. Six thirty, seven, whatever. So you just got to, you know, you just got to adjust a little bit. What were your first impressions of Logan, of Logan Lee when he got here, and how has he impacted this team? Well, first of all, we really liked him in recruiting. I mean, there was not, not much not to like there. You know, excellent wrestler, good football player, and uh, we knew about him early. You know, he was young and uh, came over. He and his coach, and his coach's son came here. His, uh, his coach's son's now a young man. Uh, so, you know, we, we got a good start there. Knew a lot about his family. Just everything about him, you really liked the guy. He was a really mature kid in high school, and obviously, obviously, is that way now. 
And I think probably the biggest story for him is he had some injuries, especially early in his career, that slowed him down. Um, he was a try-hard guy, good effort guy, and a good player, but maybe not playing as fast as you like. And that's just experience and working at it on a, on a routine basis. And he's been healthy now in the last couple of years, and just you'd see him, you know, just getting better with each 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 game out there because he's more comfortable and more instinctive, if you will. And just uh, yeah, he's playing really well for us and a great leader on on top of it. Kirk, we're a week from uh, Coach Bluter and the gang over at Kinnick Stadium for the crossover. I know you're focused in yeah. on football, but do you have any plans to watch that on Sunday? Yeah, excuse me, is it this Sunday or not? I, I don't, but uh, yeah. I, I knew we were going to play it, and I think, I think that's awesome. Uh, and something in the last two weeks triggered that. Somebody, I, I, I heard it somewhere, because I'd totally forgotten about it. But I think it's great. Uh, hopefully the weather's good for him. Uh, but I know the wrestling, you know, wrestling guys did it a couple of years ago, and I think it's, it's awesome. What a great idea. I don't know who thought of it, but a great idea, and I'm sure it'll be really well received. If it's during our bye week, I'll definitely watch it. I don't know if it is or isn't, but uh, no, well, sorry. <laughs> I miss a lot of stuff during the season. The rush defense is still only about ninth in the Big Ten so far this year. We've seen it be great under you pretty frequently. How do you bring that level of performance back up to the high, high level? Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's like the pass rush. That was an issue till Saturday, and it may be again next week. Um, yeah, we're just going to keep working. We do what we do, just keep working away. And um, it's not that we're not aware of stats. We're too cognizant. But all you're trying to do is move your team, you know, assess your team and, and figure out what we can do, can't do, and where uh, where the work needs to be uh, directed a little bit. But but overall, it's not like there's a specific drill for that. And going back to the earlier question, I mean, somehow, some way, really what the game's about is trying to figure out how to be successful on the scoreboard. That's first and foremost. And... The other stuff over the course of the season probably works out to what, what it should. And obviously, you'd rather be top five, top three, top two in every category, but it's probably not realistic. And again, in our program, that's probably not going to be the case. But finding a way to be successful is what is important. So if we can keep them off the scoreboard enough and get on the scoreboard enough, then uh, to me, that's, that's a pretty good deal as long as you can do it enough. you know. And that's, that's a challenge. There's a lot of different ways to be successful and win. So, yeah, we're just trying to ma maximize every area. And, boy, if every game could be 40 nothing, that would be great. But I can't remember a year like that. So we'll just try, try to keep, uh, you know, see if we can find a way to get to the finish line. All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks, 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 Thank you. Thank you.